Lucia Moretti started exploring dance as a young child from classical ballet to contemporary as well as martial arts in her hometown Torino Italy She continued to study at Academia Company and Company in Barcelona Spain Later she interned and studied with a scholarship at Nuova Officina della Danza Nord in Torino Italy She has danced for Art Media Company and collaborated as a freelance dancer and choreographer with many incredible artists and companies such as Karen Rosenberg, Arion Kruja, Phil Hulford, and Tobias Boothremers at the Derrida Dance Company in Sofia, Bulgaria for the creation of her solo La Loba, performed between Bulgaria and Greece. In 2017, she created the performative collective LBWL Look But With Love With Me, Sohai Apro, a meeting between different cultures and art forms between the two artists. Lucia has also performed at the Karachi Arts Council Pakistan with this project. Currently, she is a freelance dancer in different projects around Italy and Europe. How are you how are you coping with these COVID-19 times as a dancer as a mover? So, I actually uh, feel slightly better. Hmm? Uh, personally, uh, since the start of this COVID situation, so March, uh, I felt really like there was really like an uncertain time, like for everybody. But I was in a moment of really doing a lot of things and planning a lot of future possibility. And in one day, actually in one second, everything was stopped. Mm. And, um, So for the first month um month I was really 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 uh apathetic and feeling weird uh then I realized that I couldn't like go so far like so I started to you know to move again even like alone in my in my own studio little studio and feeling uh with my movement so you know It's better right now. It's yeah. better. Uh I felt that I was I was in a need to connect to talk with my friend dancer too and I did it as like I did it to you and I did mm. it to other friends not to talk and share. But personally I think as like a covid situation for dance artists and artists in general is like a proof that we need to do more to cover ourselves for the future and mm. don't stay mm. so uncover as mm. we were that's yeah. so true no because um i think um someone someone was saying that somehow dancers were kind of preparing for this unconsciously in many ways no where we learn how to move in small spaces when we don't have studios available like you and i used to work in your house you know moving tables around it was it was difficult and the family like people in your house had to deal with that but we we were managing uh yeah. for that but yeah it's a lot of fear of uncertainty like what is our future now as performing artists as uh, also working together like i wonder even you and i when we used to improvise together you know we really go with it on the ground with each other how where is um like how do we do that now you know i you know like i you know that i don't know if it happened to you but for me it happened that i was walking in the street and uh, like one of my good friend lives like in the same my street but a bit like far and we met and you know it was so weird because we couldn't hug each other yeah um and i i i remember that i thought this is not my life because usually like my life since like i have memory is about to touch people and hugging people and uh, it's it's the work right we grab we touch we put on the floor we take it with us back even if sometimes if we don't like this person like i maybe the smell who knows but still like is our normality and now is not the the normality anymore and i was yeah. thinking one day when maybe you will be in barcelona taking a workshop with this cool choreographer let's say 2 years from now uh, i will be like a contact improvisation right now yeah or and no this is like a, maybe you know maybe everything will be over as a 
as it starts. So, you know, like it will blow up in two months. Um, and I say this with respect, of course, for all the situation, but still yeah. like, like for us, we, will, we, we, need, we need, like even, you know, right now, everything is online. You yeah. are online training. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a bit a weird. strange right? world though. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. very strange. Yeah. You are in front of like a laptop and you talk. And also the correction, maybe to one, two person you can give, but like for 20 people. No. Like, no. I'm really like, uh, I know that I will never be able to do it for some, like personally. But like I admire people that they do because I think they, as you, you, you really have to push yourself through that. Right? I mean, yeah. I think toward the screen. No, absolutely. I think it's a very different world to teach online or to learn online because um, yeah, you don't hear the person breathe in front of you. You don't watch them sweat. You don't. And yeah, with correction, for sure, it's a. Uh, I, maybe people are saying it's the future, but at the same time, it's uh, it's again strange for us who I think we're the kind of people who kind of had. I mean, we're the generation of dancers who had the traditional training, but then yeah. we also sort of had this exposure to technology and all of these things. So it's it's a very mixed thing. So it's hard to accept this whole change, really. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. it's completely impossible to. <laughs> To accept it because like even like if you think about like a theater performance how it's gonna be like the, we, we're gonna have space between people or so like it will be not so free for everyone to go to see a performance and not just that performance like art uh, show you know comic or a concert yeah yeah so even uh, audience, like how will we get people to sit together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that, that's what I meant before, like audience. Are we gonna be sit all together? Like I don't know. I think mm. like uh, the only thing that we could do, like personally, you know, think really like second by second, even not like day by day, because like it's so so impossible to plan something that we we don't know no one of us like as a global as a world as humanity we never had we don't have the history to to teach us right mm -hmm. and so to Absolutely. grab from there and take it now actually we are as a generation me and you and other people that we need to set the basement for the future because mm -hmm. who knows now True. i mean two months ago you never thought that this was possible, right? Exactly. Had no idea. We just thought this was something in China, which was ignorant of us. But even I was like, why is everyone over like getting so worried? Yeah. It's just a flu. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I want to ask you about, um, you know, starting from your training. So you came from a ballet, you know, disciplined form training. But now the qualities that you bring to your movement, to your dance, there's so much rawness and so much, you know, yourself to that. And um, you don't like, even the fact that you wanted to work with me or the kind of dancers that you choose to work with, it's always very, you know, you want to go beyond what's with the technique, you know. And how was that education for you, you know, how... Did it, did it make you feel disconnected with your body? What was this desire to do something beyond ballet and something beyond uh, technique? Uh, so, it's an interesting question. It's a question that I, I ask myself a lot. Mm. Um, I think, like, everything starts, like, I don't remember exactly the moment, but I remember that it was in a need why I was moving, I think I was improv improvising for sure. Um, I felt the need to go be behind everything that was set before. Mm. So the need to move instead of always thinking that, you know, like technique and ballet or like 
contemporary and jazz, whatever, whatever, all the, all the, like, the big, big, uh, like, book that we have in dance. Mm. And uh, the improvisation helped me a lot because I was coming from, uh, like, so, like, a strict world. Mm. And start to improvising with a precise task, not, like, uh, imagining and, and that's it, but, like, really uh, improvisation make me felt uh, the need to discover more that there is not just what you know but there is so many other things and so many other way to move even like if you think about um, I was in this uh, I was in this uh, I was, oh I, I was in this workshop where this uh, teacher uh, say to me one thing, is not, is say, Lucia, do you know that you recognize that, for example, like people like from uh, Europe uh, usually move, you know, in this way. Instead, like people from Asia are moving the other way, from down to the top. So why you don't think the other way, instead of always go in the same way mm. and feel stuck uh, block and sad because you know like I was feeling sad so I, I didn't I knew that I will never become like a ballerina, a ballerina dancer like I knew since the beginning mm. uh, but I love it I love it ballet and I still love and I still do um, but I knew that like uh, I was searching for more and like improvisation was the tools that helped me a lot to mm. You know, even like to to meet you uh, mm. into this like improvisation, for example, between me and you was uh, the connection. We mm. could talk a lot. Like we would, like we we start to talk uh, with improvisation. Mm. To understand you move like that. I move like that. Mm. What we can do? Like was was in a need to move from the inside. You know, when you move and. And start, suddenly you start to feel that something comes from inside and you want to do one movement in that direction and the other in that direction. Um, so, and I, and I think also like, uh, I think dance is raw. So mm -hmm. then you can modelize it for sure. Mm -hmm. Like you can redefine it and then put it on the show. But I believe that the true dance comes from the inner side but is raw, completely like, mm -hmm. yeah. That's, that's beautiful. But you know, when you come from, you come from Italy where again, classical arts are really, really fresh uh, yeah. here till today. And uh, perhaps there's not much uh, money given for contemporary research or contemporary art or- No, not at all. Right? And how, how do you, how do you, um, feel about that when you talk about you know what true movement is for you how do you deal with the audience here in Italy mm -hmm. and and this is also new for me because again the culture that I come from the audience there is different but I, I do see that Italian audience is open to wanting to understand but I think you would know much more like do they do they sometimes are they like okay can you like not tell us what's happening inside your mind and your heart? Can we just see something beautiful? Is that yeah. of that? Yeah, I I think the same. Like my thought is the same of you. Mm. So the problem is still a bit that you know, art is classic and dance is ballet and mm. you know. Contemporary is still, like some of the people think still that contemporary is the people that throw themselves into the floor and actually and, and scream. That is also true. It can be, you know, it can be and it, it's totally fine. Uh, but it's, it's not just like that. So we need, I think, I, uh, I think, uh, you know, as like a young generation, I'm talking like Italian dancer, artists that are living in Italy. And they want to work in Italy. Mm. Uh, they need to understand, like I also need to understand, actually accept that we need to train this audience. So you, mm. we, need to, we need to give more. And actually, you know, mm. that is coming from the street. 
like dance start in the street like it doesn't start in a theater yes so maybe we should go back i don't know like i have this feeling but because you know so many times also you saw me i was really like without hope and I was yeah. like, oh my God, are we going to do that? Like even giving money, asking for grant, mm, mm. scholarship. Uh, mm. I think of course, like uh, the good dance will be, will come out for sure. But mm. in this time, we also like of emergency, like as we are living right now, this is the right time to show ourselves. And maybe mm. we, have, we can all also just do it with computer and Zoom and Instagram <laughs> posting and showing, but I think the, this is the, the right time to break the ice, you know, to mm. say, hello, mm. we are here, there is also me, it's not just you. Mm. Um, even like to give a voice, because actually if you think like, and you, because you know, and now you're living in Italy since a while, you mm -hmm. know the culture, like actually it's four years right now, so yeah, um, you know that Italian people are, I have really like a big open heart, but yeah. sometimes they don't trust what they see. So... It's very, there's a lot of criticism also here, and I'm yeah. thinking not just for arts, but, but yeah, again, for something that's different. Yeah, And exactly. in terms of people, because for me, as for example, being different here, I don't receive, or at least I haven't felt so, um, I felt welcomed, you know? However, yeah. in the UK, that's known for its diversity, I feel a bit, well, even when I travel with you in Northern Ireland, yeah. you know, there's this thing of, who are you, you know? Um, yeah, I'll tell you. In terms of art, maybe, yes, Italy, uh, and also spending time with you, spending time with other Italians around. Um, I was, uh, yesterday I heard that our, well, I'm saying our, but the Italian Prime Minister, uh, said that uh, oh and thank you to our artists he, that they make us laugh so much um, and we were thinking you know it's not just about entertainment you know artists are, can be anybody yeah I, I thought about that I mean Andrea and uh, his friends were criticizing this and I said well at least he thanked artists somewhere for me it's always like a step ahead in Italy because in Pakistan nobody would even acknowledge that there are artists yeah but what is uh, now this is again this is a very vague question but what is movement to you on any kind of movement what is it to you okay this is like a big question it's not vague mm. it's not weird it's just like a big question actually. yeah yeah and personal yeah. i think also personal yeah it's good Maybe. So movement, which is to me movement. Mm. I think for me movement is uh, is life, and maybe this is a is a bit like a um, cliche answer, um, the one that you read you read in the post, you know, somewhere. Life mm. is movement. Movement is life. But um, what I, what I want to mean with life, I mean I meant that uh, movement. Uh, is life because it's coming from the inside um, actually if you think about you to live you need to move right and actually even if we are still our our body is moving because mm -hmm. it's breathing the the blood is going up and down uh, the heart is beating beating so uh, I honestly think that movement is life, like it's really, even like the, you know, the flower and the plants and, and dance is actually is that, is, yeah. is just life with, you know, sequence with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because this is the way we like to count. We even <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, and it's. And it's something that is necessary. Like you need, like for me, and then now we're talking about our, the dance movement, it's something that is necessary. Like I need to drink water because otherwise, you know, mm -hmm. I can't survive. This is, the, uh, this is the other things. Like I need to dance, I need to move. Because mm -hmm. otherwise it's, I get like, I don't know. 
even I don't know even the word like even I even don't know in Italian like I would be like so yeah. that yeah mm. and you know being a dancer yourself and uh, like you say it's so necessary you know do you feel that sometimes um, you're able to handle situations in your life in a certain way because because when you're dancing you're dealing with a lot of things you know you're dealing with how it might um you know what the texture of the movement is and all of that and do you find yourself being able to deal with certain things differently and finding that people who have uh, restricted movements in their body you know a, a lot of a lot of people do um i think we're lucky and privileged that we get to move and we get to like understand and spend time with our body but people are just doing the same things you know like phone laptop sleep up uh, like and i and i really feel like that kind of makes the mind narrower so yeah. have you found yourself to be able to or maybe you never thought about it because we don't think about it that way because it's just so natural for us no yeah i think it's uh maybe something that my you know my my mind is start is start to asking because like it's so much that I'm not like sharing with other people my 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 movement or hmm. my, my ideas. Like I yeah, I share my ideas with phone, <laughs> with my phone, with my laptop. But still, like it's so it's so weird. So it's something that is a bit off still. But uh, I do realize that actually people. Uh, really, they da they do the same things. Like they wake up, they woke up, you know, like they drink coffee and then they put themselves to the laptop. And you know, what I realized in this like COVID situation, like uh, lockdown, that we are so like actually simple and nothing. Like <laughs> this is the thing. So actually, we could do so many more things we don't realize and even our body gets so stuck in what it is like you know just what you see you personally see something and you think that you know but actually yeah. you don't know nothing mm -hmm. is it you don't know even you don't know even why a person put this shirt this morning you don't know that you just like saw it right there is yeah. a reason for sure why this person decided to put like a green shirt or like and why she or he decide to sit like in a table and work all day long and don't drink one sip of water. So mm. I don't know. Mm. A bit, uh, maybe I gave like a really vague answer, but no, 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 you didn't. I'm just also thinking about it. Yeah, it's um, it's true. It's like that. And again, um, with with these kind of things, it's very it's very hard to put these things in in, in words you know um, and I've had this uh, problem making or like trying to ask questions or for people to answer certain things that they feel inside their body to put them in words because we because it's hard to put these things in words you know yeah it's totally yeah what we feel with our movement and whatever is in between that there's a lot of that and not a word is like a stamp yeah it is yeah yeah about uh, about your exploration of um hmm, i don't know what you want to explore through movement and by by making the kind of work that you make um what is it that interests you what is it that uh, what what is it that you want to explore with and that you like find yourself exploring with a lot hmm. i i realize that i uh, i go a lot where my memory is like mm. so so there is something that actually maybe you know uh, one idea came out and then i realized later on that actually this idea was already present in myself mm. Um, and I realized that all the things that I want to explore, like until right now, 
mm. are something that are telling my story or even the story that I'm not living right now. Maybe a story that I lived like 200 years ago in another body or maybe I was something else. Um, Beautiful thought. Yeah, so I realized that and actually in the last creation that I started to create, I realized that I felt a bit like, uh, mm, like a bit like dodgy. I was like, again, I'm there. Oh my God, I'm telling again something. But then I realized that actually it was just like a, um, my speaker view was not the speaker view of everyone. This was my intentional like exploration. But actually when I was starting to ask him to work with these uh, five uh, dancer, they had their personal completely view and exploration that then I realized, okay, so it's something that you give, but it's not something we will we, we, we'll, uh, remind. Like we yeah. remind, it's not something that will be set because you decided. So mm -hmm. I think my exploration like uh, so far is something that it's coming from my memory, past memory, present body memory, and for sure, I know something really from past life. This is like, That's I okay. had this. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of times um, we, we think curiosity is all about uh, moving forward, you know, going, yeah. moving on, going forward, exploring more, wanting to get, but this is very interesting trying to get something from what's behind you or what you've left, or maybe what you haven't, what's already kept in your library and you just have to take it out and see what that is. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, um, it's really interesting, yes. Yeah. And what with other people, you know, for example, um, even with me, I think when we worked together, I think we were less about, I think, I think when you work with other people, like five dancers, for example, and you have to, and you've done more like last year or two years ago, like you were doing 20 people. Um, and, and in that also you try to um, encourage them to bring their voices out, to bring their, you know, um, their stories out in some way or the other. Mm -hmm. Does that get a bit overwhelming for you sometimes to, to take a lot of stories in? Um, yeah, it's really overwhelming actually and it's also really overwhelming giving something and then see and deal with that mm -hmm. but for sure like I, really, I believe and as I also think that me and you we discover a lot that what you bring inside as per, like as a human being so as an individual as Lucia, as Sohai, as like Roberta, whatever is something uh, so personal that is something that is necessary mm. even in the creation even the improvisation moment and I realized it that for example in March like so this COVID situation was like a bless for one thing and like a curse for another so mm -hmm. um, I was so overwhelmed like I was so overwhelmed I was just like doing things for the sake of doing you know I was I was the, the normal life individual. So I was waking up, I was having breakfast, and then I was going to the studio, and I was like, I was empty. And then I was like, why? Even if this creation process was so important to me. Uh, and then I realized that I was so overwhelmed that uh, I was in a need to get it out. Mm -hmm. And I was talking with anyone about it. Mm -hmm. I was overwhelmed and I was getting so close and attached and you know I like as artists and everything is a uh, everything is around around and about your yeah. art you know mm -hmm. you you are in the shower and you think about it you are having breakfast and you think about it you are sleeping and actually you think oh this is could be there but actually what this person is bringing to me I really need it so because we we getting so so like close and it's really like a work is a work about empathy mm. and and feeling mm. Mm. 
is the most vulnerable work ever. Mm -hmm. I believe that. So yeah. totally overwhelmed. Like, yeah. Now that you mentioned vulnerability, um, you put a lot of vulnerability in your work, you know, and I see that. But does it help you, or does it, uh, or is it the other way around? Perhaps maybe when you're, are you able to be more vulnerable in your personal life as well? as a human being, as a, as a woman, um, in, in your uh, friendships, relationships, um, or is it something that you are only able to bring when you are able to dance and move and create? I think like uh, is, uh, is my moment when I dance, when I create, is my mm. moment. Like even if I'm, a, I'm like a really passionate woman and sometimes like strong and a bit like tough but it's just like a cover of course um but i think the the vulnerability like the high person personality that i can bring it out bring it out is when i dance when i create and actually the thing is the most moment that scared me mm. because i'm totally out but at the same time i feel really strong so there is this duality you know uh, yeah but yeah. for sure, when I dance, when I create, I don't think I had I have the same level when I maybe I try, but you know it's scary. Yeah, but cool. I think I think even like being tough and anger, I think those things are also being vulnerable. No. Yeah, it's, totally. It's the fact that we can express because sometimes I find myself feeling very guilty about putting something out like an emotion again. Uh, living in a society we we have to be very we have to stick to the norms also that okay you have to have control over some things um, for example i can't go out in the streets and start crying because i feel like it um but i mean at the same time if i end up doing something like that i think it's also the fact that uh, yeah i mean that's mad just doing it like that but what i mean to say is that just not blocking feelings you know um and the fact that you are able to express i think because trust me people don't do it anymore people don't no. express. they'll be angry they won't show it they'll be sad they won't talk about it um and i think that re those repressed emotions stay in our body a lot of times yes yes have, have, sorry i interrupt you sorry no no mind. no not at all actually this moment they, they get stuck into yourself, they will bring disease. This is the other problem, you know? So if you, if you, yeah. so I'm, I'm starting to learning that I need to talk more, for example, about my feelings. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I rather be doing that. Come here, God. <laughs> I'm, be, I'm rather be doing that. Uh, will be easier for me doing that while I'm dancing. Mm -hmm. while I'm dancing and maybe so, that's why you dance maybe that's why I'm dancing like maybe because I'm maybe because through dance I can call myself a dancer or mover like whatever we like to call yeah yeah and I think um, talking about uh, carrying um, emotions within your body has mm -hmm. have you ever experienced that have you ever carried pain or um, any any particular thing that's just stuck with you when come out in your dance and maybe come out in in movement habits or come out in um, different ways or maybe come out as a blockage uh, to your to your dancing or to your way of thinking. Have you you, you meant pain. that sort of baggage. Yeah, but you meant like pain, like pain, like um, any pain, physical pain, emotional pain. Uh, uh, a lot like for example if i talk about like physical pain i had this moment where i was like carrying this big big pain in my in my back in my lower back sacrum for me and i realized that it was coming a lot while i was moving so the the only thing that i couldn't do was like moving and actually this is the only thing that i want to do so, and I remember that I, I, I stuck without uh, like really telling the truth about my pain. 
because I wanted to dance and I wanted to have an audition and I wanted to travel and I wanted to, do, to meet people. And this was something really stupid because actually it cost me six months of like total rest. And, and like pain, like so other pain. So if you talk about not physical pain, but also can become physical after. Mm, yes, I had like I had these things that I get so close some to something that it it uh, you know it came out that it was like a bad memory or bad moment in my life or something bad that happened situation um, that I carry with inside it and then is the moment where you get so vulnerable right and you get so fr yeah. that is the that is the precise moment where you make the the story of yourself you you put it out yeah. Yeah. then i think it, there is the only moment is the true moment where like the audience or whatever is the audience is can it can see where is who are you so mm -hmm. So this moment where you maybe share pain, you know, you can see from a movement, you can see, you can see for even like a, just turning the head, like, and then you realize, oh, I see like 100 years of history in this mover. Mm -hmm. So, and also it, it, it stuck me, eh? it, it was a moment that uh, I couldn't even like um, move and panicking and, couldn't do nothing else than just like stay still and be be afraid of it but also the opposite so it's something that I think uh, is also necessary like uh, just because like just because it's something that scare you is not something that is is bad mm -hmm. even if we are talking about pain that we related to a word of like pain yeah yeah. Like that, yeah yeah that's true and with uh, with being uh, dancers we sometimes um, you know we're often told oh you're you're so aware of your body and you're so fit and you know there's um, all these things that we get to hear oh you're graceful and all that but along with that a lot of times uh, we know that sometimes we're working as you know, not us, but I'm, I'm seeing dancers in general are being made to work like soldiers a lot of time. And I keep repeating this a lot because I feel like sometimes they lose their essence of, you know, connecting yeah. why they're dancing and what it does to them, you know. And so do you see a change in um, how the dance education world has now become? Um, is, is there like more... Uh, emphasis given on letting yourself come out or is it still very much about um, do like this do like that and just that's the only sense of achievement you get when you are able to do something perfectly well I believe that is half and half mm -hmm. so it's something that you know there are people that I also personally there there are moments that I allow myself to do it and there are moments that I don't. And these are the bad moments. Yeah. It actually get me stuck and I don't move from my little, like, you know, little corner. Um, but I do feel that there is this, uh, like, I allow myself to do it, that as, like, society, dancer society, uh, we really don't know how to do it. Mm. they don't teach us how to do it we should learn with our skin and with, with our like knowing people but it's not something like it will be beautiful that our like generation can teach us to the next you know it's good to let go and it's good to to be who you really are instead of just go beyond your pain and go and get stuck and you know and just saying that you need to do it otherwise you will never be a dancer and you suffer you do it more and if you suffer it's good yeah but whatever it's not also like that right 
you know, I think the truth is always in the center, is a, you know, mm. it, it, yeah. So it's still something that is in a really like a long and difficult process. Yeah. 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 And mm. you're so right about the go going beyond your pain, the physical pain, because also we're not taught how to take care of our bodies. Honestly, I think a lot of my education of looking after my body and being careful with it came from you, you know, while working with you a lot of times you were telling me the, you know, the right way of doing things or like just allowing myself to not push in the wrong ways. Um, mm -hmm. And I would have never, I don't know, I couldn't, I remember I had this tailbone thing and I would keep asking anyone that I would meet about it. Uh, but yeah, I think you as a person, we weren't even working at that time, but you would keep, you know, putting efforts to, and I, I, I think you do that with a lot of people, you know, just being in the space and giving what you know. And I think that's yeah. important. Um, we were not taught how to look after our bodies and just be okay with the skin of it. Totally. We, yeah. no one like it. We realized it while we were while we were growing up, you know, mm -hmm. and you people and you you change country for a bit and you met this dancer and you met this choreographer and artist that share with you that your body is important. So because actually you can't do this job with your body. You can yeah. you need it. This is yeah. our is everything, like so yeah why pushing so like it's good to pushing and i love to pushing but i realized that you know you need to understand how to do it not when is to stop it but how to do it because there is yeah. a way to do it yeah and you also need to stop that's true like sometimes you just need to, like you said stillness earlier that's very beautiful that sometimes there's still movement but you just need to stop for a bit and not do anything Yes, totally. This is also movement, as we say. So. Mm. so what is beauty and aesthetic to you in dance, in movement, in life? Or do you connect those, both your ideas of beauty and aesthetic in life to what it is in your work? Or uh, is it different for you? I think beauty and aesthetic, for me, Mm. It kind of a go alongside with what I like to to create and what it, what I feel in normal life. So not like dancing moment. Uh, I think it's about honesty. So beautiful mm. beauty is uh, is honesty. Mm. These are things, and honesty can be really bad can be really raw and can be really tough. <laughs> like the ingrown hair. <laughs> yeah, the like ingrown hair. So, you know, I, I think like uh, more about, you know, like coming from like a, a ballet world, like contemporary world, let's say technique world, hmm. is uh, more about the beauty and the aesthetic of the form. Yeah, yeah. It's also beautiful because also like you coming of from course. your word is about even like you like your your past, like this is something that you bring, like your bar baratanatyam is about yeah, form yeah. and shape and about yeah. makeup and costume and this is yeah. something me and you we talk about a lot, how to break this rule and take it out because actually we I as a Sohaya bro, I really needed all these things to show my movement, not at all. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's something that you can add. So uh, I think like the most beautiful moment, if I can see like, you know, when you see like a mover and you see that this, per like this mover is, is so honest with his movement, that actually is not something that I can see, uh, I can't say it in words because it's something that you need to see with the eyes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but you know what I'm talking about. The moment where you see something and you're like, wow. Mm -hmm. For example, when me and you, we were like, we were watching this uh, Crystal Pie show. You remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that moment, you and me, we came out and this is, was a true story that they were telling, Vitrofina. Yeah, yeah. 
me and you, we were at home and we were in the bed and we were like, oh my God, this is like real life. And they yeah. just say it with their movement, you know, it's, we were shocked. Yeah. So this is, this is it really a, moved us. Yeah. It, this is what super honest. Even yeah. if at some moment were really tough to see it. Yeah. And, yeah. and to know, because then after you, we read the story and we were like, oh my God, this is really happened. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's honesty. Mm -hmm. And actually it's also like in real life because like... Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I'd really like to mention this because I think I couldn't really understand this before, but I think working with you um, broke a lot of my barriers of, um, of, I don't know if it was my own concept of beauty or if it was something that I was carrying within me. Um, but after working with you, I found myself to be less conscious of um, sweating or whether I put lipstick or not, whether I, um, whether my skin is, you know, showing as I move. Um, it wasn't about correcting myself again. And it's, um, of course, like the one year that I spent that not gave me a lot too, but working personally with you, it's, um, I'm not saying it to like give you a compliment, but I'm saying that that kind of inspired me. Um, and you know, I'm thinking about it right now in this moment, as you speak, I was like, oh, this is what it was coming for, uh, from me. It was after I started doing these things with you. Um, and there was never like, we, we worked, there was never a moment of being a teacher uh, to each other. I, mm. we, we learned things in very raw ways, you know, from each other. I mean, I definitely like had these moments of, yeah, because you challenged me a lot and those challenges are now I'm starting to understand are, wow, it's, uh, it's brought some difference into how I approach dance now. And, um, and I didn't quite understand that at that time. It's, uh, it's just, it, I found that to be interesting and I thought about it now. Um, yeah. And, and losing my hair also, you know, it, it brought me more to that. Um, you did a big step. Like actually, yeah. I, I, you know, like if you see now my hair are so long. Super long. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's something that I was not like having since years and years mm -hmm. actually i realized that i was like okay you did it for 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 a work job and yeah. okay but still like you did it yeah, and yeah i i questioned to myself even like if you do if you do know that is one of my wish to shave my head yeah i don't know if i will be able to do it because now i'm so stuck with this with this uh, hair that are long and pretty yeah it's something that because you did it make me thought and i was like they will grow again yeah yeah you know? exactly but um in your movement in the way you work you're not always uh, forcing your feminine energy onto it you know being a woman you're not always forcing the prettiness um mm -hmm. to come out in it and i think that's what uh, what was quite different for me because um in in my improvisation also i would always feel um a girl you know i was all i would always put myself in a certain gender and i think it's um very interesting to like go beyond that you know um, yeah yeah yeah. I'm okay. yeah yeah so my last question again is a big uh, sort of a thing but well, with all these years of, you know, you moving and working with people, what are your little, little explorations of being a human being with, with all its good and bad things, you know, of, of being yourself as a human? What, what have you perhaps discovered or been aware of uh, as a human being? Hmm. Okay. I can say that during this moment, like of my life, so about these two months that just passed, I didn't realize that my exploration, like the things that I was in a need to do it, like in a, like in the in the normality, so in the normal life, was to give myself 
things to do and how to do it. Like for example, I had to, I was in a need to uh, like read a lot of books mm. and I was in a need to practice a lot of my yoga routine and to meditate a lot. So we realized that as like a Lucia, behind this all dance and artistic and mm. creation, I need to really listen to the other side of myself. So, because you know, there were day that I was, uh, you know, getting up, um, waking up and I'm like, okay, maybe don't do like for some reason, maybe, you know, I woke up late or I don't know, maybe I don't feel it. To don't do my personal exploration, so my daily life that was even like in a need to listen to myself more than before. Because if I find myself in that situation of where I was stuck and in a trouble, it's also for that. It's about mm -hmm. listening. And so I started to do it. And I started to really to listen what my what myself was telling me to, my, to myself. Instead of just like listening, but don't put it in, a, yeah. in movement. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's about... It's about listening and to do with pleasure what you really want to do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And, and again, listening is something that, uh, you know, people cannot do unless they physically or mentally, you know, put their mind to it. And yeah. I, that's why a lot of us are starting to uh, meditate nowadays because we realize that we've kept our minds, our hearts, our bodies away from each other. Yes, totally. I'm starting to bring that closer to each other. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much, Lucia. Thank you, so high. Thank you for listening to the podcast When We Move. Stay updated for more interesting conversations coming up with a different guest every Friday. To watch or hear previous episodes, click on the link given in the description. Stay safe and keep moving.